Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Data Blitz podcast. A um, little bit late today, but we're still going to get out this DFS episode. Um, so I'm going to try to make this a little quick because kickoff is in an hour. Um, and I probably won't get this uploaded by then, but that's fine. I don't think I have any players uh, that I'm covering that are playing. Um, so I guess what we can start with here is the value plays that I have for the week. Um, these guys are, I have a couple of them in stacks. I have a couple of them just kind of spread out. Um, I don't like have one per position, but I think there are a few good plays here. Um, so we can jump right into it at the quarterback position with Jordan Love. Um, Jordan Love is going for 5,800 right now. Um, that puts him pretty far down in the quarterback rankings here. <clears throat> um, you can get him for uh, less than you can get Geno Smith, Jared Goff, uh, Matt Stafford, um, and then those kind of top guys there. But Jordan Love has averaged 19.2 fantasy points per game so far. Um, they're playing Denver, and Denver has been the second worst defense um, against quarterbacks. So this is a guy that I actually have him in my favorite stack of the week as well um, with Christian Watson. And I just think that the Green Bay probably has a bounce back this week after their bye. <clears throat> There's no better team to play for them uh, than Denver. Denver's defense has been pretty terrible throughout the season. Um, and I think we're going to get, you know, a significant number of points out of Jordan Love. He's not going to break your bank. He's also not, you know, the cheapest guy out here. Um, you know, there's potential that you could start someone like Tyrod Taylor or um, I don't know, Kenny Pickett and have some success. But I think... Jordan Love is definitely some value in those head-to-head uh, or double-up matches. Um, it should be a guy that doesn't get a ton of starts because he does cost a little bit, but they are playing uh, against one of the worst defenses in the league, so I think that's just a value play. Um, the second quarterback I have here is Geno Smith. Geno Smith... Um, is playing against Seattle this week. He's averaged 15.4 points per game. Um, and he kind of was pretty good last week against Cincinnati um, with 15.9 points. Uh, and he had two interceptions. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals are a better defense than the Arizona Cardinals, who have been the fourth worst defense against quarterbacks this year. Um, from a, a daily fantasy perspective. Um, you know, it's very obvious that Geno Smith has tons of weapons at his disposal. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of Kenneth Walker this week as well. Um, and it just feels like Geno's and the entire Seattle offense is going to uh, be able to score a lot of points against Arizona this weekend. Um, so there's not really much of a question there for me. I'm definitely a big fan of of both guys here. Um, next up here for value plays, uh, I think Josh Palmer kind of doing this in a random order. I had my notes together and then I just kind of, I'm just going to riff it. Uh, so I have Josh Palmer, uh, he's 4,800. Um, he's averaging 8.4 points per game, but you know, last week he had four receptions, 60 yards off of seven targets. Um, so he's definitely getting utilized uh, a significant amount. Um, you know, I think we can expect to see him get hopefully, um, close to 10, maybe more points a game, uh, this game, uh, against Kansas city. And, you know, there's like some Justin Herbert hate coming in. I don't really get it. Uh, but I think it's time to capitalize on that and pick up who I think is the wide receiver two on the chargers. Uh, in what should be a higher-ish scoring game. It seems like the Chargers often lead to a lot of those type of games, except for they didn't last week, but that's all right. 
Um, Next up for these value plays, um, I have a couple guys that, you know, they're still, uh, all these guys are a little bit weird this week. I don't feel as sure as I did last week. Um, I don't know if you only listen to DFS episodes or something like that, but the picks last week uh, turned three dollars into five hundred. Um, finished third in the Thursday to Monday contest, uh, and I'm pumped with that result. I really wouldn't have wanted it to go any other way. Um, and so now I have that huge bankroll where we can kind of play cash games um, in addition to tournaments. So I'm going to clean up the format a little bit, but for now, uh, another value play that I have is Isaiah Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco is going for 6,100. Um, that puts him kind of in the bottom half, top of the bottom half of running backs. Um, I, I see Kansas City being up early in this game, hopefully running the ball a lot. Um, and I think Isaiah Pacheco gets a lot of that work. Um, so that's kind of... It's all I really got for Isaiah Pacheco. It's kind of obvious to me that he's going to get a decent amount of work. He's averaging 15 points a game. Um, some of the guys above him, like Jameer Gibbs, are not even close. James Cook, not even close. Um, you know, I just see, hopefully, we get a lot of work from Isaiah Pacheco. And that produces uh, points. Um, don't want to forget my sit here, but... Um, one more guy that I have as a, I don't know, I think this is kind of a crazy pick. Uh, this will be like my last value play here. But um, Rondale Moore is hopefully going to get a lot of targets. I know that uh, the cor- cornerback one, I forget who his name is, in um, Seattle has been shutting down guys like uh, – Jamar Chase and, and a couple other um, big names so far through the season. And I think he continues to shut down Hollywood Brown. Um, and who is going to benefit off that? Potentially Rondell Moore. Um, you could use that same logic and go get Michael Wilson. Uh, Michael Wilson is more expensive than Rondell Moore. Not by a ton. Um, I want to go in and check that out but Ronald Mo- Moore like, is like 3000 right now like he's very cheap and Michael Wilson's 3800 oh, there's only $300 difference um either one of these guys uh you know what? I'm gonna say it's Michael Wilson go get Michael Wilson um use the same logic I just did for Rondale Moore and you can hopefully get uh, a few points out of him because of the opportunity that should go his way. Um, next up here, we have a couple starts that I want to mention. And I guess we can jump right in with Devonta Smith. Uh, Devonta Smith does have a hamstring injury, so it, if that doesn't impact him, definitely keep an eye on it. But if that doesn't impact him, he should get some volume heading his way. Um you know, A.J. Brown's not going to keep it up forever. Devonta Smith is the 1B to him. And I think both those guys um, should be able to get enough volume this week um, against Miami. And, you know, Miami hasn't been the best against opposing wide receivers. There's a chance for both these guys to eat. Devonta Smith is uh, going for 7,000 right now, but I think he's a worthwhile start. Um, other starts that I have here, Drake London, um, Drake London, things definitely went his way last week, uh, ended up winning me some money. I hope if you played him, he won you some money, uh, 12 targets, nine receptions, 125 yards, you know, just feels like he's trending in that right direction. Uh, even if Desmond Ritter isn't really improving. Um, so I love Drake London this week. Uh, another guy that I'm a big fan of is Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison, uh, as we all know, has plenty of opportunity now. Um, 
It's really a matter of if he capitalizes on it. Last week was kind of saved by a touchdown, but um, I think we should see the Vikings have a little bit more composure. They've had more time to practice without Justin Jefferson now. Um, We're really going to see if Jordan Addison is that guy. Um, But I wouldn't count him as more than like a wide receiver three or a flex. Um, Another guy that I think is a start this week is Jonathan Taylor. Uh, the game script kind of switched last week with him going up to eight carries, uh, opposed to six, but he is trending in that right direction. He had five receptions for 48, 46 yards. Um, Jonathan Taylor is getting more snaps. He is going to outplay Zach Moss pretty soon, and he's only going for 6,500. So he's going for less than other guys like uh, Aaron Jones or uh, Alvin Kamara. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to get that volume, whether he gets it this week or in the next couple weeks. I don't know, but he's a safe player to bet on. Um, Another guy that I'd say we start this week is Mark Andrews. Um, Huge fan of Mark Andrews. Uh, Detroit hasn't been the best against opposing tight ends. Mark Andrews... Averaging 14.3 points. It seems like this offense can sustain both him and Zay Flowers. Um, And I'm interested to see, you know, I think this is going to be another high-scoring game. I think Mark Andrews should get a lot of the benefit from that. I almost expect two touchdowns from him this week. So I'm a huge fan of Mark Andrews this week. I feel like the tight end landscape uh, outside of, you know, Kelsey and, I don't know, even Waller, I'm like questionable. I think outside of Kelsey, Mark Andrews is the side end I'd want to have the most this week. And he's going for 2,300 less. So I love Mark Andrews this week. Um, and I'm hoping he can put up some points. I also have Kyle Pitts in a couple lineups. Um, Kyle Pitts is, he did have a big week last week. Uh, you know, Desmond Ritter was good enough, kind of, to support fantasy teams. Um, I think Kyle Pitts is questionable. I only have him in one lineup. Um, but you know, if he does get that volume again, there's no question that he's going to put up points. So I love Kyle Pitts and I hope he gets something done. Um, and then one more guy here that I'm a big fan of is Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers last week, five Reception, 61 yards, a touchdown on seven targets. Uh, You know, he is kind of going through that quarterback carousel right now between Brian Hoyer, um, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Aiden O'Connell. But he seems like he's kind of QB proof somehow at this moment. Averaging 17 and a half. uh, The Bears haven't been the best against opposing receivers. um, And I think Jacoby Myers keeps it up this week. He's definitely... Uh, a guy that I'm more interested in, in, um, you know, like those cash games as opposed to tournaments, uh, as I think he he might be highly drafted, um, but I think he'll get some points. Another guy like that is Amari Cooper. Um, Amari Cooper is, he has been kind of the only point on offense for the Browns this week or this year. Um, I think they look his way a lot this this upcoming week. I don't know if Deshaun's playing or not. I think he is. Um, and Indianapolis, I think, gets kind of run through by the Browns. And I think Amari Cooper is going to be the big beneficiary of that. And then I guess to jump over to defenses here, I'm a big fan of the Raiders' defense this week. Uh At Chicago, you know, Chicago doesn't have Justin Fields. Um, I would stay away from Chicago players entirely until they have Justin Fields back. And um, it's kind of all, I mean, they're not going to put up any points. It'd be very surprising if they did. So it seems like without Justin Fields, the Bears are even worse. And the Raiders defense has been decent enough to capitalize on that. Um, and one more defense I have this week is the Packers. It really does feel like it could be that week that the Packers blow it to the Broncos and then the Broncos end up 
um, you know, still sucking after that. But there's a very good chance that that's just the biased Packers and fan of me who thinks that we're going to blow it at every shot now. Um, and, you know, Green Bay does have a very good defense. Denver doesn't have a great offense, um, nor do they have a good defense. So I think it should theoretically be the week for the Packers to get that get right game, um, which is why uh, I have that first quarterback stack that I have, uh, which we can jump back into in a second. Um, so that kind of covers a lot of those starts and sits that I have in addition to a couple value plays. Um, I want to get back into the routine of having like one per position next week. Uh, but I didn't get to do that this week. I have have a ton of lineups and, you know, I'm going through them and, and mentioning the guys that I like. Um, but there's also a couple guys that I don't like. Um, so we can jump into that too. Um, one guy that I don't like this week is Zach Moss, uh, for the exact opposite reason that I like Jonathan Taylor and because Jonathan Taylor is going to get work. Zach Moss is trending down for me. Uh, he is only 6,200 right now. I think if you started him last week, you're probably not mad about it. Um, but it does feel like Zach Moss is potentially, um, on his way out, uh, of like the starting snaps and majority of the snaps um another guy that i don't really love is ramondre stevenson i see new england getting down pretty early in this game and um what are they going to do they're going to throw the ball probably not have a lot of time of possession not run the ball out and you know i don't think ramondre benefits from that so I would steer clear of Ramondre Stevenson, even though he does have that high like opposition rank in, in DraftKings. Uh, Bills was seventh worst defense against the run. It's just, I think the Patriots have no chance this week, so I would not risk that play. Um, and then another guy that I'm really not a big fan of at all, and he is kind of cheap at 5,300, but is A.J. Dillon. All these analysts and stuff, they're saying, like, start A.J. Dillon, start A.J. Dillon, start A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon is going to get the majority of the work against the worst run defense in the league. Um, I don't know. When I watch A.J. Dillon play, the, like, football, he looks like he's running in quicksand. Um, he's a great guy, but he's I, – I get very upset every time I watch him take a snap. Um, as a Packers fan, it just feels like he's done stuff, like, for two, three games in a row, strung, strung together those good streaks, but – um, outside of that, he isn't very consistent. He gets like two yards per carry and he's had plenty of opportunity this year to prove himself and he's still just not doing it. So I would steer clear of AJ Dillon, um, this week. Um, so then I guess on to wide receivers and, I think a couple of the guys that I'm steering clear of this week are sort of in that closer to the mid-range area. Um, one of those guys being DJ Moore. I think I covered DJ Moore last week, um, but if I didn't, DJ Moore is going to get less volume. Or no, I didn't cover DJ Moore last week because Justin Fields wasn't hurt yet. Um, so now Justin Fields is hurt. DJ Moore is not going to get as much volume. Um, it did feel like... Uh, whoever the starter is there looked his way a lot. Um, they didn't even target Cole Komet once, but I just don't think those are quality targets and reliable targets that you can rely, like um, project. So it, I don't, DJ Moore's going for 6,500. He's not worth it <clears throat> at, at that price. Um, one more guy that I have here is Calvin Ridley. Uh, I'd much rather play Christian Kirk than Calvin Ridley this week. Christian Kirk is averaging more points. Um, to me, that's just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like Calvin Ridley is the guy on his own team, really. Um, so I would go ahead and start Christian Kirk if you can uh, over Calvin Ridley. Um, and then we can kind of jump over to tight ends. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of TJ Hawkinson. I'm not a huge fan of Darren Waller. 
um, or Cole Komet. So that kind of takes out like three of the top 10 guys. TJ Hawkinson didn't get as much volume last week as we thought he would. Now he's playing San Francisco. Um, and I don't know. It's kind of the same logic as Jordan Addison, but for some reason, TJ Hawkinson just, he should be more established. He's not a rookie. So it feels like he should have stepped up a little bit sooner when, when Justin Jefferson went down as opposed to Jordan Addison needing some time to get used to that. Um, you know, and then we can jump down to George Kittle. Um, I don't know, just he's averaging 9.6 points a game. He had that blow up game, um, against Dallas for with 27.7. Um, he had 16 against the Giants, but it feels like, um, you know, Christian McCaffrey, you can guarantee points from him every week in, uh, San Francisco, but, the other guys, it's like they choose one guy per week and that guy goes off. And then the rest of the guys just kind of don't do anything. Um, and for that reason, I'm kind of staying away from San Francisco players for a little bit until we can see some more uh, you know, established opportunity share, I guess. Um, so that's kind of all I have. I mean, I can cover, I guess, quarterbacks. I'll, I'll cover my... Um, Sorry. I'll jump right into the stack of the week, um, which I haven't covered yet. Uh, so I, for that, I'm thinking uh, Jordan Love and Christian Watson is my stack of the week. And I only have one. Um, I only really need one. I'm, you know, I think... Jordan Love, as I said, resurfaces this week. Christian Watson needed some time to get back into things. I'm hoping that he has that connection built out a little bit more with Jordan Love, um, and we should be able to see him get plenty of opportunity against the Broncos, who are theoretically terrible. Um, you know, I'm a little bit scared of the Packers this week. I do feel like they could blow it, but if they don't, um, Jordan Love, Christian Watson, those are the guys there. I want to say that I want to start Aaron Jones, but Aaron Jones might still be getting worked in a little bit uh, after his injury. Um, and I know that he doesn't need as many touches as like an AJ Dillon to make an impact in fantasy, but uh, I just wouldn't trust it yet, to be honest. Um, so, and then another stack that I would kind of check out and maybe put your feelers out on is uh, Geno Smith and Tyler Lockett. Uh, Tyler Lockett. Um, I think Tyler Lockett is averaging like five targets a game. Um, he's had a couple blow up games against Detroit and Cincy averaging 12.4 points per game. Just kind of feels like a guy that is going to eat against Arizona this week. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that and I'm definitely a big fan of Tyler Lockett this week. Um, so I think that covers everything. I know today was a little bit more scrambled. I wanted to get this out though. Um, I probably rushed too fast than I needed to, but I think we are actually going to get the podcast out before the start of the game. Um, and so let me know if you trail me at all here. I think a lot of these guys are good value or, you know, reliable starters. Um, and I hope I highlighted a couple of guys that you should kind of stay away from. Um, so that's all I got. Appreciate you for tuning in. And I will try to get this up before the game starts. See ya.